Hmm. I have it. Thoughtline. I can reach Trench. Well, listen to him. He feels more like an echo. An echo with important info. I need to get back to Emily. Hotline. Uh, oop, three we acquisition date, August 9th, 1963. Containment location, hotline chamber, executive sector. Hotline loop 3 UE, containment procedure. Object should be accessible for use except to the director. Inaccessible, okay. Description, paratility. Object is a 1960s era red bake light telephone. The rotary dial has been replaced with a black knob of unknown purpose. The phone weighs <laughs> unknown. The object allows the director to communicate with the, if used by another other than the director, the object will cause lethal See Dr. Dowling presentation 11.6. Whoopsie. For more information, the object is currently bound to dirt the trench. Background the object spontaneously manifested in the director's office, placed on the desk. Director Northmore was the first known bureau agent to use it. A battery of tests were run on the object, including and surgeon origin remains unknown. Ring, ring. It's Dr. Darling calling. In 1978, a comms department intern heard the hotline ring and picked it up, going against every safety protocol in the manual. She never recovered, and the handful of witnesses required extensive memory repression therapy. It is a phone. It's an object of power. It doesn't connect to any typical network. A direct line to the astral plane and the board. And my hypothesis is under the right conditions to other planes of existence as well. Our very own Ouija board. Only the director can answer it safely and what he hears is kept classified. Stabilize the control points, the ley lines, the meridians of the oldest house. Darling found a way to soothe this beast. We discovered we must cleanse control points of all interference. It's my duty as the director, like Northmore before me. I couldn't manage it in my own house, at my home. I'll damn well do it here. Without the control points, the oldest house would swallow us alive. We'd be sealed inside an endless labyrinth. No one would hear our screams. If an enemy ever managed to corrupt the control points, it'd be over fast, spreading like a cancer, leaping over the fire bricks like a crown of fire. They are the weak point. Darling was right about that. He's wrong about everything else. Dangerously wrong. Suspiciously wrong. Has he been compromised? I can hear the hotline ringing in my dreams, constantly ringing, ringing so loud I can't hear the voice I'm straining to understand. Why don't I pick up? It's a secure line of communication with the board. They would tell me what I need to know. Do I fear their answers? Would they have warned me of this threat? I didn't see it coming. The traitor in our midst. A conspiracy plotted right behind me. I can't trust anyone. I must assume all my intel has been manipulated. The hotline is the only channel I can trust. Bind it. Control it. The rule and the ritual with objects of power. It can't be tampered with. The lifeline to the astral plane and the board. I must seek guidance. Soon. I'll rest first. I'm so tired. Always tired now. But I must reach the hotline. I think I'm under attack. An attack of dementia. Exhaustion. It's a brain making me forget the hotline I must 
reach the hotline. Mm -hmm. A director needs a team, my management team. These people know the secrets of the Bureau as well as I do, some even better. They have proven themselves. Darling, Tomasi, Salvador, Marshall. Marshall especially, my head of operations. She sees right through me. She knows I don't like relying on people. The only person you should fail is yourself. So I followed my own orders. Northmore hated my guts for that. But things change when you become director. You suddenly see this dark void for the horror show it truly is, filled with screaming fear we pretend to control. Sand leaks through my fingers. The roses I pruned in the garden back when I still had a family, all dead. Heat escapes my body. My thoughts are scattered. The universe keeps expanding, and I can't keep up with it alone. When I forget that, things go wrong, and my team has to pick up the pieces, damage control, to help me get out of my mess. The Ocean View Motel and Casino is a familiar friend to me. I stayed in countless motels like it while investigating AWEs across the country. Back in my field agent days, those roadside motels all bleed together like a dream. Same and not the same. Anywhere and nowhere. The ocean view operates on dream logic, and the light switch cord leaks out to be found in the most unexpected places, and sometimes successfully encouraged to appear and act as a convenient lock to keep out those not trained in dreamscape navigation. Even Bureau veterans can only find one key in the motel, the key that opens the door marked with the inverted black pyramid. The rest, the many other doors, are still mysteries to us. We're all merely guests there, even the board. Sometimes I need to visit, just to breathe easier for a while. It beats the numb, sterile apartment I spend my nights in, insulated from everything but myself. I guess that's where the whiskey comes in. Something's coming. The whisper's growing louder. Worst winter storm in Bureau history. Retribution for my sins. Our sins. This threat could destroy the Bureau. Everything I've built. Destroy me. A web spun, turning this place against me. I catch glimpses of it in the corner of my eye. It's just out of reach. Elusive. It's clever. A perverse game of hide-and-seek. Is this part of an attack? Obfuscating the facts. Dimming my eyes. It's hard to tell. I need answers. I haven't heard back from Darling. I fear for my friend, my closest ally. I think we made a terrible mistake all those years ago. That thing he studies is putting us all in danger. It's my duty as director to keep the Bureau safe. It'll be difficult. What's done can't be undone. There's no easy fix. Magical thinking is a requirement for survival. Pain and suffering are mandatory. To change things, you have to break yourself. I don't know if I have the strength. I'm old and weak. I'm afraid. I can see my hands tremble. Losing control. Mm. 
You are the director now. I will expect independence, dependence. You are authority, chosen one. The Bureau game needs you. So is he talking to us as well? <laughs> the player? Hmm. People react strongly when I tell them about you. Is it too soon to tell Emily? She might be able to help. I still missed. Is it? Is it? Okay, now I'm wondering how the hell I'm missing. There you go. Put up your control to exit of staff. I know there is some concern regarding our operations, exceeding the annual budget. So long as we operate within the oldest house, we are obscured from sick. Scrutiny in many respects, if our budget demands are not exorbitant to the point of drawing attention, then they will be granted by the U.S. Treasury without question. The PC is just another line, another spreadsheet that some lowly accountant won't ever notice. Their eyes will skip over us as if we weren't even there. The nature of the oldest house allows us certain freedoms in how we operate. Our being here is no accident. Regards, Zachary, a trench director of the Federal Bureau of Control. So nothing to say about that. To add a thing where they will tell me which ones I haven't gone to and which ones I have because I don't remember where everything's at. Agent death notification. Federal Bureau of Control, dear Mr. and Mrs. Potts, I regret to inform you that your son, Grand Potts, was killed in active duty this past week. While the details surrounding his death are classified, I'm honored to tell you that he died in the service of his country. Be proud of his courage in the face of danger and his commitment to protecting our nation against our enemies. He will be remembered by his comrades and colleagues. Say to regret the pain this message will bring you. Take some solace in knowing that a sacrifice helped to protect the country he loved so much. His effects will be returned to you with all speed. Since the yours, Howard J. Murray, Deputy Chief of Communications, Federal Bureau of Control. Launch efficiency? So, not going to select the launch. It's like, eh. This is the longer round. I don't remember all the doors.
Paratility, compiled by Emily Pope, Research Specialist, Motor of Dr. Casper Darling, Head of Research. Examination of paranatural topics, subjects of power, and their paratility. Summary objects of power are unique in their capability to grant some individuals paranatural abilities. We call these individuals paratilitarians. The potency of these abilities depends on the paratilitarian. Using the object of power as, a, as an example, some paratilitarians can achieve a thorough distance of, while others are only capable of as little as. Zita to Darling presentation of point fifteen for more information. What exactly determines an individual paranatural competence is unknown, but it is largely believed that some exist within the body and that, like all muscles, they can be exercised. To continue my analysis of history, of course, access to the North more records, considering he is one of the most accomplished paratilitarians the Bureau has ever seen. As Darling is still considering this request, refer to file 854 1982 for a full report. Call this the music room. <laughs> level three. How many level one? make out what Judge is saying now. Incredible. What did he say? He talked about his management team, people who knew the Bureau of Secrets. Your boss, darling, Tomasi, but he's gone. He's gone. Salvador? He's the head of security. And Marshall? Helen Marshall is head of operations. She's tough, ex-CIA. She took her rangers and went to the research sector to secure the HRA production. She hasn't come back. Someone who could help us. The other sectors. How do I get there? It's impossible because of the internal lockdown. You can perform a directorial override to lift it, but that can only be done in the maintenance sector. Normally, you take the sector elevator down there. It connects all the sectors, but it won't work while the lockdown is in effect. We already got past one lockdown. Maybe I can find the way. Jesse, look, with no prep, no training, in this extreme situation, you are doing phenomenally well. And all that and the hiss can't seem to affect you. I mean, I would love to run some tests on you. If you agree, that is. We could find out something that would help us. Tests? I don't know. She might find out about you. But I wouldn't mind understanding more myself. Okay. If you think it will help. Great. I'll check the internal documentation for any lockdown bypasses. We need to get these sectors open to locate Darling and Marshall. 
And I'll look for a way inside the maintenance sector. The sooner we find one, the sooner I reach this override. Hate that room. <laughs> I hated that room. <laughs> I don't call her. Territorial override. Upgrade oh, a lock new release on the nearest control point. On. Initial impressions. Emily Pope is specialist. Spider director Jesse Faden. Masses of his type part one confidential summary. Initial encounters with the entity known as the Hiss have revealed various big real facts. Most notably the Hiss is able to invade or corrupt control points. Altered items and even humans radically changing their behavior, curiosity curiously, any person wearing one of the wearable HR devices that Dr. Totting has been distributing. Over the past weeks, was not affected by this corruption. Maybe I should take a nap. Jeez. The only known exception to this fact is the new director, Jesse Hayden, who possesses an inherent immunity to the his. This can indicate that she has already been corrupted, but her behavior is so in contrast to that of the other his that I have dismissed the theory. When my final observation comes from Miss Faden herself, she's able to cleanse material and organisms to the his corruption. This is basically on a his corrupted entity, but unfortunately, the process seems to kill the host. Perhaps the host's physiology becomes reliant on the his. More work to be done. Refer to file for full report. We are at war. Hostile takeover. The his is the opposing force, foreign power. We will provide countermeasure strategy, except adjust them at control points. These countermeasures missions will benefit you. Right. We will give resources rewards for each completed countermeasure. Unknown caller. Emily instructs Jesse to find the hotline and project the power in the form of an old telephone. To understand the messages from the dead director trying to communicate with her, they hope he can provide insight into the Hiss invasion. On a way to the hotline, Jesse gains the launch ability by blinding the floppy disk and the rabbit to power. She is forced to fight the Hiss corrupted head of communications Alberto Tomasi. Jesse uses the hotline to call a Trench. He talks about finding his management team. Dr. Casper Darling, head of research, and Helen Marshall, head of operations. To show allies against the Hiss. What I get? I got energy boost. Mm. All right, let's talk. Hi, Jesse. Nothing new. What the hell? Thanks, Emily. I'm sure I'll have more questions soon. Just let me know. No, I have more questions now, but nothing happened. Nothing happened. Do you hear that? 
Someone's singing. Where's it coming from? I thought that was just the music. <laughs> Bring me back anything good? Well, you just said that somebody was singing. I'm so sure I'll like... have more questions soon. Just let me know. Singing? Sounds like it's coming from the elevator. Oh. Pope wants us to get a field lab set up as soon as possible. With what? We can't get any equipment from the research sector until the internal lockdown is lifted. And see what you can find around here. Computers, documents, any measuring devices you can find. Helping Pope is a surefire way to get on Darling's good side. Okay. Ah. Health, energy, melee damage, and launch damage. That'd be nice. I only have five. Para Teletarian. It'll deserve worth one and do. I'll be left at the point. I thought I which one I wanted to do. I want to see this one. Uh, Shruck Shatter. Shatter has high stopping power with a scatter shot that devastates a group of enemies at close range. Yes, uh, please. That's Shruck Instruction. Mars that I care about. Arados. <laughs> I ran out of stuff. <sighs> Kill enemies without dying. Okay. Kill his guards. Okay. They're stronger than than before. Okay. Using grip, kill enemies with headshots, okay? Kill enemies with best service open in any mode, okay? I can do three. Oh. Uh, okay, that's easy. Uh, that's easy. Uh, I wanna forget. Ah, oh, shh, okay, well, that's not too much to miss now. Projectile spread. It's like, wasn't it pretty better spread? Hmm. We'll go with this one.
still too broke. Obviously, you never read the P6 data. Like I said before, the janitor is a friendly face. The maintenance sector is the janitor domain. If I can find Ati here, he can help me reach the override. Maybe it was you who got me into the oldest house with the lockdown on. Maybe it was Ati. It felt like he made the elevator appear that took me to Trench's office. Is Ati guiding me too? So I got a shotgun and a pistol. Lava, I can just break the windows. Unless you review my Captain Lopez. Uh, these days, most YA novels intertwine the coming of age story with either a con contrived dystopian setting of a, or a tragic romance. But she managed to do both. In the story, the protagonist and her love interest search for a cure to a virus called the Fix, which is simultaneously killing her and spreading across the world. And the cure, they go on expeditions into dangerous and charted territories. The people all live in walled cities now because of the stubborn future. And along the way, they just have to fall in love. I liked how we never got to know if the fix was ever actually fixed. The ending was bold, especially for YA. The main character succumbs to the fix when she's so close to the cure and commands her love interest to go on and save the world. She knows this is the end of her, but that the job can still get done. She dies out in the unknown, alone and surrounded by danger, but never loses sight of the goal. That's a good soldier's death. Give this book 3 out of 5. I feel most of the teenage angst is a little lost on me, but I'd recommend it to my brother's kids.
The directorial override is right there, in the control room. How do we get there? Should I? I don't know. I think I have that. Uh, yeah, I think I have that upgrade. Oh, let's see it. from where? <laughs> Fast. 
I have to go back to get my reward? I thought I just grab it from any central point. Ooh, that kind of sucks. Uh. Uh. Gimme, gimme, gimme. down that way. I uh, hear yeah, Mary Chase. Let's look at the strange light in the break room. I have another object to power a merry-go-round horse below the brick room. Below the brick room? Huh. Why is the merry-go-round horse object to power? <laughs> oh well then. Place makes me nauseous. An object of power. How do you think it got down here? Shoot, shoot, evade dashes, you prove escape yourself.
Oh, okay, so that I mean. So, do you want me to evade these guys? level you and a horse are one let's see the chess keep up with me now shifting positions a merry chase well that was short and sweet Ground horse, uh, 16k, acquisition day 6, 14, 1998. Containment location redacted. Ground horse, containment procedure, object should be kept in a confined space when unbound. Description, paratility. Fiberglass horse, once used as a seat for a merry round ride, the pole is still connected to the object. The object is capable of moving short distances at high speeds. It's be quite dangerous when it's path. The object is currently bound by... Background, the object was discovered at the site of an abandoned amusement park local to reported that the rides would move on their own and that they would be chased out. When these rumors reached the Bureau, the Sea America Overnight, episode 235, agents were dispatched to investigate. Three local were found dead at the scene. The object was attacked agent by agents and folks according to the C.5 to the object long enough to capture it, I'm guessing. <laughs> So doing that. I might as well do the right chase one. Uh, just gonna have another to the power of merry ground horse below the break room. She commences the merry ground horse and gives the availability of power to roughly dash short distances. Oh, there's a floor there. So far. You know, so I can't even see. Is there and I must say there's no reason to go over there. Ah, uh, this burns. 